the Texas Learn OER Project Overview and Outcomes. My name is Tonja Connerly, and your two presenters today will be Dr. Judith Sebesta, who is a Digital Higher Education Consortium Executive Vice President. And we also have Carrie Gitz. She is the librarian, the librarian at Austin Community College and also an associate professor. Both of them have bios in our program, but I'm gonna allow them to also incorporate some additional information concerning them, but I would like to give you just an overview and reference to the workshop this, more, this afternoon. Texas Learn OER is a free and openly licensed self-paced training for faculty, staff, and administrators that was de developed by our own Carrie Gitts in partnership with Dr. Sebessa at the Digital Higher Education Consortium of Texas. I'm gonna allow them to give you more information pertaining to this, but I just wanted you to, uh, to have a connection between the two and give them the opportunity to give you more information pertaining to Texas Learn OER. Dr. Sebessa, would you like to start? I think I'll let Carrie begin. Thanks though, Tom. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Tanja, for the introduction. And good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're having a great conference and getting a lot out of uh, the open Texas. Um, so Judith and I are here today to talk about Texas Learn OER. And um, as we go through and introduce ourselves, I will let Judith say a little bit about herself and, and why she's here today. Thanks, Carrie. And as Tanja mentioned, I am Judith Sebesta. I serve as the executive director of the Digital Higher Education Consortium of Texas, also known as Digitex. We serve all 50 public community college districts in Texas. We support their digital education broadly conceived. And I am here because I'm passionate about open education and its potential particularly to promote equity in education. Carrie? And I am Carrie Gitz. I'm the head librarian at the Austin Community College Highland Campus. Um, and I've been uh, the library services OER team leader for several years. And I am also the co or the, the creator of Texas Learn OER. And I'm here because I believe OER increases student success and provides endless opportunities for faculty to improve their teaching. So today we're going to cover a history or a brief overview of how Texas Learn came to be, where, where it originated. Um, we'll introduce it. We'll go out to kind of a live quick overview of the site and the modules. We'll talk about the outcomes and the successes of the project and sort of what we've learned so far through the experience. And then we're going to talk about what's next and the, the version that we're talking about and thinking about of, of Texas Learn uh, OER 2.0. So Texas Learn OER started um, first at Austin Community College. I was a part of the Spark Open Education Leadership Program in 2018 and 2019. And as a fellow in that program, I was asked to do a capstone project. And that capstone project, uh, as part of that, I created ACC Learn OER, which was a set of modules that I took back to my institution and made available for faculty and administrators and staff to learn more about OER. Judith happened to be one of my peer reviewers for the, Texas, for the ACC Learn OER capstone. And one of the outcomes of the capstone project in this program is to not only make something that is useful for your own local institution, but to have it be applicable to a wider audience. And so at about the same time I was getting ready to launch ACC Learn OER and Judith had reviewed it, um, ISKME and Digitex and the coordinating board had also released the Texas OER survey. And they had uh, surveyed institutions across Texas about their OER initiatives, their programs, their needs, and their priorities. And one of the priorities that was identified was the, the need for faculty training um, at institutions about OER. So all of this was kind of happening at the same time. And Judith being familiar with the ACC Learn OER saw the potential for modifying that and adapting it and making something um, more applicable to a, a wider audience in the state of Texas. So what we did is uh, Texas Learn, we created Texas Learn OER. Um, Digitex contracted with me outside of my role at ACC and I was able to revise and remix um, the original ACC Learn OER. 
So in other words, it, it's an OER about OER. Um, the modules are intended to be used and consulted by individuals who are both new to open educational resources, but also for those who want a refresher um, on areas such as the benefits of OER, the licensing attribution. And because it is a fo focus on Texas, there are examples of the OER work happening across the state. There's also information about legislation and things that are specific and unique to Texas. It is created using Google Sites, but we also have a Google Doc version of it. So it's easily modified and adaptable by others who want to remix it and make it um, applicable to their institution or even their state. Uh, it was peer reviewed by uh, OER experts, both in Texas and across the nation. So we have some of them I see on the call uh, or in the, in the program today. So thank you for your efforts and your feedback. Um, I'm gonna jump out to a live version of it, but what you'll see is there's some basic, some overarching um, learning outcomes. And it is a set of 10 modules and the last module is a final assessment. Each module is composed of learning outcomes that align with that particular module or topic that's being covered. It is a mix of text and videos, um, linking out to additional resources, at the end of each module, there's sort of a knowledge check that you can review your information. And then you have the assessment at the very end. Module nine is that look at OER in Texas where we have some very specific information. And again, it is something that's easily adaptable um, because of the format that it's in. And using Google Sites, there's an accessibility checker. So we were able to make sure that it met um, the quality standards that we wanted it to meet. I think that um, is, again, sort of the, the quick overview of it and what it looks like. Um, I know there might be some of you that have an opportunity who have already gone through it, but I'm going to turn it over to Judith, who's going to talk a little bit more about um, sort of where we are right now with the project. So let me get back to my slides. Carrie, thank you so much. And, you know, I'll just take a second to thank you profusely for your work on this. It was some really neat synergy back in 2019 whenever she had asked me to serve as a peer reviewer, which was just a wonderful opportunity for me. And at the same time, as she mentioned, we were working on the statewide OER survey and landscape analysis. And one of the outcomes was to provide uh, more training for faculty and others in OER. So uh, it just kind of worked out nicely that way. And so very, very grateful to Carrie in this regard for working with us on this. And you know, as Carrie mentioned, we wanted to be sure that there was some sort of, kind of tangible product that those who completed the modules could have and use for their own professional development. So Carrie, in conjunction with I and my staff, created this, uh, this final assessment. So anyone who goes through the previous nine modules can then take this final assessment. And if they earn a 80% or higher on that assessment, they can automatically receive a certificate of completion. They can attempt the assessment as many times as they want. So, so that's, I think we, we want to make it a win-win and a fairly easy way to succeed at this and gain that certificate of completion. And then it can be submitted to the appropriate department at your institution to potentially earn hours toward professional development or continuing education units. And what we're recommending, this was largely based on the time that it took the peer reviewers to move through the modules. We recommend the number of hours of professional development be three or 0.3 continuing ed units. So this is uh, something that I hope we can continue to offer. And again, it is free um, for you to engage in the modules, but also to take and receive this certificate of completion. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks, Judith. So, where are we right now? We, we launched it in the beginning of August, 2020. I believe that's right. I've seen, I'm in a time warp this year, but August of 2020 is when we launched um, Texas Learn OER. And since then we've had 68 completions um, with, that have earned their certificates. We have had some duplicate completions. So we had to sort through the numbers because as Judith said, people can take the assessment multiple times to earn that 80%. So this is, um, you know, when we take out those duplicated counts, 
of completions. We have 68 individuals who have earned their certificate through Texas Learn OER. I noticed a spike last week in um, participants through Open Ed Week. So I think the word went out about Texas Learn OER last week. We've seen uh, individuals from both two and four year institutions across Texas who have completed the modules. I also noticed that um, we've had users that represent seven states and one country. Um, an individual from Sudan has completed the Texas Learn OER modules and considering adopting it um, for his local institution. When we look at the type of user or the type of person that has completed the, the Texas Learn OER, majority of them are faculty, but we do have administrators, classified staff, prof tech, as well as adjunct faculty who have completed the Texas Learn OER. A large number are the other categories. They did not identify how they define themselves as others. So I'm not really sure um, what employee category or classification this, those individuals might fit under. That might be something we need to look at in the future. But even though the modules have a focus um, for you know, anyone interested in OER, you can see that the, it, the focus is mainly faculty and faculty have been um, participating and taking, uh, going through the modules. So I'll turn it back over to Judith, who's going to talk about um, sort of where we're looking forward and what we're looking forward to with the next iteration of Texas Learn OER. Thank you, Carrie. I appreciate it. This is particularly gratifying for us at Digitex, and I'm sure it is for Carrie as well. Open, uh, Texas Learn OER is licensed CC BY, the most open of licenses, and that was very much um, intentional so that hopefully others would take the Google site um, or the Google Doc if they want to start with that and adapt it to their local context and needs. So we have learned that Rice University here in Texas has adapted it for their students and, and uh, sorry, for their faculty and, and staff and instructional designers and others and librarians. And they've called it Owls Learn OER. And we'll drop that link in the chat here in just a bit. I don't know if you, yeah, we'll, we'll get that link in the chat to you there. Um, but they named it Owls Learn OER. And theirs right now, I believe, is a, is a Google Doc um, that they have, that, that they've created but you'll be able to see the ways that they've adapted that for Rice University. And then recently, I'm so excited to have found out that North, the North Dakota University system is adapting Texas Learn OER specifically for their state. And they're gonna be replacing that module that has information specifically about Texas policy and practice with information about their own in North Dakota. So we're very eager to learn of anyone else who may be utilizing, adapting, remixing Texas Learn OER. So please don't hesitate to contact us if, if you have done that, or if you're interested in doing it. And Digitex would be very happy to provide any assistance that, that we possibly could in that regard. And then, um, Carrie, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and, and talk just a bit about what we're planning for the next iteration of this. Texas Learn OER 2.0 is what we're calling it right now. But uh, Carrie has already worked with us to start developing a scope of work for this project. And I believe that, that she's, she is interested in contracting with us again on developing this next version. And this next version is going to be based on, we'll be returning actually to the original peer review um, to some of their feedback that they gave that we weren't quite yet able to incorporate in the first version. Uh, but also feedback that we've been getting along the way um, in a variety of formats on the original version, some things that we have talked about, but we haven't yet had our formal kickoff meeting for the project. We're hoping to do that actually after our spring break next week. But we've been talking about incorporating um, some information or more information about things like open pedagogy. We wanna update the Texas information because as this conference has shown, there is so much going on uh, related to OER in Texas. And with the legislative session happening, there very well may be uh, you know, new legislation around OER that we'll need to include within that Texas module as well. Um, and we've talked about an increased focus on equity, diversity, and sustainability within this new version. Carrie, what am I forgetting? What else are you perhaps thinking that we should include or dreaming of including? In addition to that, I think we also talked about looking back at the assessments and the evaluations that people have completed so far to see if they if we've identified some things that um, you know we've missed or maybe need to update or improve. Um, we are seeing some duplicate responses in the assessment. So looking at 
Is there content that maybe isn't clear um, or maybe the question in the assessment isn't clear? So overall, just sort of an improvement or um, looking at some areas that maybe need a little bit more clarity and, and correction perhaps. I think we also can, um, we'll pull Google Analytics for the Google site in order to perhaps gain a little better understanding of if there is a, a specific place or places that are, that become barriers to completion um, and moving towards that certificate of completion. So we'll, you know, we'll be looking at those sorts of analytics and data in order to better understand how users are moving through the trainings and how we can help support their success in it. And by the way, I am, um, Tanja, thank you so much for dropping those links in there. I'm gonna drop in a, a direct bit.ly link to Texas Learn OER, but Tanja's okay. right that you can go to through OER Techs because I'm very pleased that um, the coordinating board has included Texas Learn OER within the state repository as a recommended uh, resource for, for those engaging in OER. But here's the direct bit.ly link to the project. Thanks for asking about that. Um, I think that, who was that? That was, yeah, Mandy, thank you. Harry, what else? I think that's kind of our, our spiel for the day, isn't it? <laughs> I think so. And I did see some questions come in the chat. So um, I'm gonna try to drop that other link that Judith mentioned with the, the version that had been modified. I don't know if that's been put in there yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop um, sharing my screen and then we can address some of the questions that have come up in the chat. Thanks for putting that, that the link to uh, Rice Learn OER, right, mm -hmm. Harry? Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, Can I, are you, are go, you ready ahead, to respond to a question in, in the chat? You, yes. you ladies ready? Okay, great. Mm -hmm. We have a question from Kenneth. He says, I understand that Texas Learn OER is self-paced, but are there any guided or moderated options that libraries without local OER expertise can host for faculty on their campuses on some of these modules? the first time that at least I've gotten that question, Kenneth, to be honest. Um, but I, to my knowledge, no. Carrie, that's kind of my simple answer is that they, no, that is not available. But yeah, and I'm trying to think of, uh, of other options, um, any guided moderated options. Um, I don't know if you're looking for some sort of toolkits or things to host workshops yourself, or if you're looking for um, um, more facilitator, facilitated base, like a six week type program. Is that kind of what you're asking for? We're asking about? Let's see. I just, I actually just changed the setting. If, if Kenneth or anyone wanted to unmute themselves, is that okay, Tanja and Carrie? Uh -huh, and that's yes, I can, I can do that. Oh, I actually just did it, Tanja. So they should be able to unmute themselves okay. verbally. Kenneth, if your mic is working, you're free to have the floor to ask your question. I don't think his mic is working. Um, yeah, it, he, he posted a follow-up, just exploring ideas since I'm charged with investigating. Um, I mean, there are so many resources out there um, to get people started and in, in, familiar and kind of up to speed with OER. A great resource is the um, Community College Consortium of OER. Um, they have an amazing set of webinars that are freely available, recorded or live, you know, depending on when they're coming up. Um, there are opportunities, you know, I don't know if you're at a two-year or four-year institution, but again, Community College Consortium of OER, um, which is CCC OER. Um, there is opportunity for, um, I'm trying to think of some of the other great examples that are out there. Um, and if anyone here on the call wants to chime in and um, make some suggestions too, but um, you know, Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board in Iskany will be holding an OER Core Elements Academy this summer. That's great. Uh, Kyla just posted that in the in the chat. Um, and, and like I said, go ahead, Tonda. Oh, oh no, I'm. I was going to say, Carrie. Then we. Also have additional setup information at OER Commons and also Creative Commons. Um, 
Kenneth, can you tell us what level are you at a two year or four year institution? Oh, he's at Baylor. Yes. Yeah, and I know that, um, you know, yesterday I attended a program about the um, Texas Digital Library Ambassador Program, their OER ambassadors. I know that they're starting to do some work. Um, there are other memberships that you could inquire with, uh, with your institution. Um, the um, Open Textbook Network, um, they have a great program for librarians. Spark, the education, the um, Open Education Leadership Program that I mentioned. Um, there's lots of information and resources out there. And the nice thing about the open community is all of these resources are open and freely available, easy to modify and adapt sort of to your local needs. And I'm someone who, um, you know, when I started in all of this back in 2016, was very new to OER and um, for a period of time was sort of self-taught and, you know, just investigated and took all the workshops and all the webinars I possibly could. And, um, you know, until I had some more formal training on it. So, that's how a lot of us start. So it's um, it, it's a great community to um, to ask questions and, and get information from. And I noticed that we had a question about how you sign up for the course and how many hours it takes to complete it. So it is completely self-paced. It's open and ready to go 24 seven. So you can just click on the link and start making your way through the modules. The, the certificate that you can earn is automatically graded, scored, and you automatically receive the certificate after you achieve that 80% or higher on that assessment. So, so that, you know, it's, you can do that anytime. Um, and as I had mentioned, the, based on the peer reviewer feedback on how much time it took them to move through the modules, we say that three hours is kind of the average amount of time, but it really, there's, there's opportunities to do a variety of activities um, that could, could mean it could take more time for you. So it, it can really vary, but it, it, it's really meant to not be onerous, not take too much time. And, and kind of the recommended amount is the, is the three hours for the professional development credit. Carrie, do you have anything to add to that? I just add that once you do complete it and you have that certificate, then you can take that certificate and send it to your institutions, you know, HR, or whoever manages your professional development and um, your continuing education credit hours and submit that to them so you, you do get credit at your, at your local level for it. And again, OER is about sharing. So we have some from our learning community. John Lane put in a, additional resources, Kenneth. Hopefully they'll be able to help you out. And I would, you know, if anyone that's here has, um, has looked at Texas Learn OER and is thinking about adopting it and modifying it for your local needs, you know, Judith and I would be very interested to, um, find out how we are going to remix it and modify it. I think that's one of the things we are very curious is just to see how other people are using it. Um, I think that's one of the hardest things to track unless someone tells you that they've remixed it or you kind of stumble upon it because someone else has referenced it. So um, if you are thinking about uh, remixing it, we would just love to hear, love to see what you've done with it. And by the way, we have updated it some along the way. That's the beauty of a digital resource, right? Um, so we have been able to, to add, for instance, when it was initially um, created, it did not include information about OER text, which had not launched yet. Uh, so we, we went and included links to OER text and some information about that. And we'll be able to do that on an ongoing basis. But this, hopefully the launch of Texas Learn 2.0, which I'm, oh, I'm going to go ahead and say this, Carrie, publicly, and I might regret it. But what we've been talking about is a, is a, a December 2021 launch for that, but we'll have to see. Uh, you know, with so many others, we're, we're a little bit behind because of snowpocalypse last month, but we're hoping to get back on track and maybe have that, that launch of, of some, you know, some more significant changes available by December of 2021. Judith, we have a specific question for you in the chat about your, um, based on your background, your, your, what they see in the background for you. <laughs> I love that, John. Thank you so much. Um, my, you know, my background is more in theater and I'm very much an amateur musician. The guitar, I've been playing since I was 14 and I'm still not really that good. 
The violin is my pandemic project and it is so difficult you all to learn by yourself. So I appreciate you asking about that, John. There, music is, is one of my passions, even as I'm really not that great. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, would we have any more questions before our time has expired? Is there any more questions that we have for our two uh, presenters? This workshop will be closed captioned and it will be placed on the website for future references. But before I leave, I would love to encourage you to attend our closing this afternoon at 345. We'll have a student panel and we'll also have our closing. So we look forward to seeing each and every last one of you there and also bring a friend if they're not aware of the closing and the student panel. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you. Thank you, Tanja. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your conference.